I am so scared. I don't even want to be. Ooh, what's in here? Anyways, don't judge me for stealing all that stuff. Look away. Thank you. Anyways, I'm scared. I don't even want to be here. This place gives me the heebie-jeebies, honestly. Oh, shit. Hello? Okay. Ooh, what's this? Honestly, though, I'm just curious because I do have this same machine in my ship, but for some, blah, for some reason, it's not really doing anything. I wonder what's in here. Great work. Thank you. Appreciate the compliments. Oh, mm, I don't know about that, but. Huh. Interesting. Alright, so this... Yep, this is the entrance right here. <gasps> oh no, he's dead. Get... Oh, come on. So, uh... Is he dead or? Oh, poor fella. You think he did it to himself, Captain? That's real sad. So sad that I'm taking this wine. And I'm also taking all of this. And the gun. I was so wrong, wrong, wrong. The whispers did not stop, not, not. They have returned. They howl, howl, howl at me, demanding I return home and bathe the streets in crimson. Bright crimson, beautiful crimson. I can think of only one th way to end this. End, end. Forgive me, Delia. Yeah, he dead as hell. Can I take this? Thank you. Uh, what else can I take? Wow, he killed himself because he was dumb bored. I would be too if I had these crappy ass games. Alright, let me just, uh, fix this. Activate relay transmitter and... Yeah, we are actually good to go, huh? All right, so being in this place is really creepy. I say we skedaddle because I don't want to be here anymore. All right, let's go. Let's head on out. All right, I am here back at the ship, safe and sound. Let me see what's up with Pervardi. You, you okay? Yeah, so... This is my hidey spot now. Yeah, I can sell. I was looking for a place that was quiet. I figured the kitchen would be louder than the hold, so... Here I am. Cozy-like, ain't it? I... Th well, what are your thoughts on Gorgon? You want to ask about anything in particular, Captain? How are you feeling about this job right now? It sure is lonely out here, on the edge of the colony. Anything could happen. And ain't no one gonna come to help us. Uh, good talk, Provardi, because that's pretty cryptid and dark as fuck. Let's get back to Groundbreaker. I really need to, uh... Leave. The Groundbreaker has approved our request for docking, Captain. You're free to disembark. Smashing. I love it. Captain, oh. I was hoping for a word. Vicar Max, que pasó? Anyone with eyes to see would not be shocked to hear that the colony is dying. But the board's solution, on the other hand, choosing what? to save themselves and their families and friends at the expense of the rest of the colony? Those fucking bastards. Watch what your profanity. Well, the thing is, we'll have to dig more into the issue and sort it all out. Yes, of course. And when you do, you can count on me to back your play. Your ability to get out of tight situations virtually undetected hasn't failed us so far. 
Anything you would like to discuss? I'd like to know something about those I'm flying with. What's your story? Nothing too out of the ordinary. Just your run-of-the-mill vicar with a violently enthusiastic disposition. Violently enthusiastic disposition? Uh, that's what my parents called it. I grew up in a pit of a town much like Edgewater. I was destined to be a laborer like my parents, but I was infected early with a need to solve the equation. My passion didn't sit well with them. Why were you so passionate about it? My parents, ironically. They internalized the precepts of scientism like no one I've ever known. They had a pure faith, a faith that brought joy to them regardless of the situation. I envied that. I wanted that peace. I thought if I became a vicar, I could find it. Or at the very least, find out why I lacked it. But weren't they proud when you became a vicar, at least? They thought I was fighting the plan, should have accepted my lot. Some people pursue the clergy for power, prestige, but that was not me. What's this plan you keep talking about? The simple version is this. The force which we call the Grand Architect created the universal equation that underlies and defines everything in the universe. Everything flows from the equation, or in layman's terms, the grand plan. Is the grand architect a consciousness, a natural force? Did it create the equation on purpose? The answers to these questions don't really matter. The equation, the plan, is all that matters. Contentment is found by accepting one's role in the plan. If you can't help but follow the plan, then everything you do is part of it, right? The plan is not one rigid path. There are a variety of multitudes contained within it. Our paths have variants, but we'll end up adhering to it, whether we like it or not. Some choices make the path smoother, some rougher. You can even go outside the lines, but the further outside you go, it's like an unbreakable elastic band. It will only stretch so far before it snaps back. The further it is stretched, the more violent the eventual correction. Hmm. Well, seems quite trusting of you to just sign on without knowing anything about me. I have run headlong into too many walls in my pursuit of the truth. This book is my last hope, and you were my only hope of getting it translated. What if the book doesn't have the answers you're looking for? I honestly don't know what I'd do. This quest has consumed me for the better part of my life. I fear there's nothing else left to me. What about you? What's your story? I was a colonist, wow, a colonist, colonist on the hope. A scientist named Wells saved me. And how did he do that? He stole my body from the Hope at the edge of the colony and thawed me out. Well, you do seem different than every other colonist. Let's pretend for the moment I believe you. What are you going to do now? I'm helping him recover more of the chemicals he needs to save the rest of the colonists. That seems a dangerous proposition. Why risk your life now that it's been returned to you? Hmm... That these are all really good reasons, but you know what? My my friends are on the hope. Oh, I see. You have my condolences. Well, let me see. Who else? Any ideas where we can find someone who speaks French in this colony? I've been thinking on that. There's a former associate. Uh, infamous philosopher scholar who fled Terra 2 some years ago. He's an expert on Bakonu. He's also who told me of the journal's presence in Emerald Vale. If anyone in this colony could translate that book, it would be him. That sounds like a good lead, but how do we find him? That's a good question. We should start on the Groundbreaker. It's where I'd go if I wanted to get off Terra 2. Great place to pick up a ride to Hephaestus, Scylla, even Monarch. 
All I need is access to a data cartridge from the security terminal. Their easily hackable system keeps a registry of all crew manifests for both arrivals and departures. How will a crew manifest help us track down your scholar friend? I'll comb the last six months of departure manifest to track the Philosophist's off-world destination. How is it that a simple Vekar happens to be such a highly skilled hacker? Before I transferred to Edgewater, I had a wealth of time to develop certain uh, secular skills during my years serving a particular penitentiary flock. I meditated, led sermons, provided guidance to the inmates as needed, of course. I also played prison yard tossball and taught myself a bit about computronic security systems. Sounds good, let's go. Thank you, Captain. And you know what? I'm gonna take both my boys, Felix and the Vekar. All right, boys, we're back on the groundbreaker. Don't do anything stupid. I just need to finish up on this last request. You see we had a conveyor pull in? One of them interstellar guys. And then we can get on to helping Vicar with his quest because... This is it. Security. I can check the departures registry to find out which crew cha... I mean, the scholar shipped in and out with. Hmm. Hmm. I have a change of heart. I'm gonna go in and see if I can find anything. Um, hopefully I'll be able to get in without no issues. Ah, uh, this is gonna be hard. How am I supposed to get in without- wait, hold on, let me talk to this one. Hey. Hey. Damn. Ooh, what's this? Oh. <gasps> Thank you, out of the world. You're awesome. I was just about to ask, how am I supposed to get in? I am so good. Oh my goodness. This is beautiful. All right. Oh, it's in here. Fuck. Hold on. And this is... Ooh. Great work. I know, thank you. Just yank the drive and I'll do the rest. Okay. Now that we have the data cartridge, I can finally find out where that scholar I'm looking for ended up. Okay. Um so I'll just give it to you. Got it. His name is Reginald Cheney, and he joined a sublight salvage crew. Only he's not listed on the return manifest. Must have made landfall somewhere he wasn't supposed to. Oh, yes. Here. There's a domicile on Monarch in Fallbrook, rented to the same bit cart he used to buy his seat on the salvage ship. I should have guessed. What better place to lay low if you wish to avoid the authorities? This all seems awfully convenient. I admit it was a bit of a long shot, but when you've spent as many hours as I have in contemplation of the universe's secrets, you sometimes get a sense for these things. Sounds good. Let's go. All right, let me just squeeze on by, and I am good and golden. And let me see here. I definitely want to finish up on this quest here before I leave. A hard cider for a hard life? That is so hilarious. Oh, that's a cool costume! Is it just me or is Groundbreaker feeling extra chilly? Maybe you ought to help yourself to a piping hot frozen dinner. Oh, it's Martin. Hey, Martin. Still wearing the hat? How observant. Sarcastically. I'm to state that this uniform is more than headgear. It's a state of mind. And our customers know the difference. Oh, and it's not the best choice. It's Spacer's choice. Taste the freedom. 
lot of slogans to keep track of. And sometimes I forget. You work for Spacer's Choice. Ever been to Edgewater? Heard of it. My orientation Aetherwave showed that famous Saltuna cannery, which I'm sure smells as good as it looks. It's not so bad. They're struggling, but they've got good hearts. That's true. That's a spacious choice, Spear. Take what you have, polish it up, and make the best of it. So, what can I get you? Some soap. Everyone loves soap. Everyone will love you for using it, too. I've got to ask you about the hat. I'm bound to satisfy headgear-related inquiries. Please send any complaints to our consumer care headwear division. You doing all right in there? Oh, I'm having a stellar day. And not just because I'm legally obligated to say so. Almost as stellar as a spacer's choice is affordable. Can you see in there? I can see all of the top quality merchandise in the Spacer's Choice catalog, which is available here at a reasonable price. How do you brush your teeth? Spacer's Choice regrets that we don't sell toothpaste at this time, but we're always working on delivering exciting new products to our customers. Sprat wash, mouth wash, and mantle floss are among the exciting line of dental goods currently in development. Do you miss eating solid food? Don't miss out on these deals. You'll find <laughs> none like them on all the ground. He's ignoring all my questions. Or anywhere on the Halcyon call. I am trolling the shit out of him. Do you have to sleep with that on? Trouble sleeping? Try our Lunar Eclipse mix. That's... Two handfuls of pep pills washed down with a hearty swig, a two-hour energy brew. The blast will send you through the stratosphere, and the crash will knock you out gold, guaranteed. Does Spacer's Choice make you wear that? Add an additional 10% to your purchase today, and the proceeds will be donated to Spacer Cares, our premier corporate welfare program. At Spacer's Choice, we care about your health and emotional well-being. I care about your health and emotional well-being, too. Blink twice if you need help, only man. Only to make them wear this hat. Ooh. Do you need me to help you get you out of here? Even if my contract didn't forbid it, I think, uh, I think it's part of me now. Oh, my. Now. Are you ready to make Spacer's Choice Lunar Green Moon Mouth Lozenges a part of you? Lunar Green, the future is spearmint. Hmm. I am undressing the man beneath the mask. Are you okay? I, uh, you know, damn it. I broke him. Slogan for that one. Finally. Uh, look, this hat, my job. It may not seem like much to a brave space captain, but they're all that I have. If there are self-made purgatories, then we all have to live in them. Mine Damn. can be no worse than someone else's. Damn. Now, if we're done with the chit-chat, I hope you don't mind if I make the most of this short life and try to be the best moon person I can be. Sorry if I pushed you too hard, Martin. It's fine. I should be stronger than this. Thanks for taking an interest. Uh, speaking of interest, can I interest you in some quality budget goods? At Spacer's Choice, we cut corners so you don't have to. You know what? Let's see what you've got for sale. Uh, have a look. Let me see here. <gasps> oh, the outfit! Oh, the hat! Yes, I would love to have that. Thank you so much. And is that all? Like... Okay. Well, at least I got the hat. I'm pretty happy. I know she's in there, Mburu. What? What the hell's going on? You can't get me out of there. Oh! Oh. Don't make a scene, Dr. Fenhill. 
I am not making a scene. But you are, though. That's why I came in, to see what the hell's going on. I'm sorry. Am I causing a scene? See, Umfuru? We could have avoided all this unpleasantness if you just let me talk to Jesse in the first place. What's this about your friend? Let me get one thing straight. Jesse and I are not friends. I just owe her, okay? As for the rest, I'm trying to figure that out. All I know is that she's been here too long, and she's apparently not receiving visitors. Hmm. Wait. You don't even like her, but you're checking on her? You say that like it's weird. It is. But why bother? Like I said, Jesse did me a favor, and now I owe her one. I just don't like to leave a debt unpaid, that's all. Maybe I can look in on Jesse? Be my guest. If you know something I don't about dealing with hospital bureaucracy, I'll be impressed. Which leads me to you, Dr. What's your name? Uh, hello. June Lei called up from engineering, said I should let you buy medical supplies from our stores. Now, is there something I can help you with? I'd like to see Jesse Doyle. If only my other patients had so many inquiring after them. I'll tell you what I've told the others. What? The records say Miss Doyle checked herself in and requested I admit no visitors. The requests of our patients are paramount. So no, you may not see her. The records say, have you actually spoken to her yourself? She's not my patient. I'm certain no one on my staff would falsify patient records, if that's what you're implying. Okay, well, I'll see you around. Take care. Hmm, that's pretty weird indeed. Pretty weird. It seems like I'm getting to so many, uh, so many side requests. Huh. Can't say I've seen you before. I take it you're a freighter, Captain? If you're here to better yourself, you'll have to wait. We're having a spot of trouble with our delivery service. Better myself? Isn't this the med bay? Sure is. You need a deft hand to straighten a busted nose or sparkle up those not-so-pearly whites? I'm your gal. Of course, there's not much cosmetic improvement going on at the moment. Not without my mechanicals. Where the law is, Irian, anyway? Hmm. What, what's going on? I'm expecting our delivery fellow to stop through with medical supplies and service auto mechanicals. Name's Captain Irian. A brave idiot with a penchant for getting himself delayed. Sometimes by dates, usually by bandits. What do you need the mechanicals for? Surgery, mostly. Medical personnel are difficult to come by on Groundbreaker. Why is that? The board won't let their doctors and nurses station here, and they own all the medical schools. If we can't hire their people, we can't hire anyone. Everyone on staff here on Groundbreaker was trained by me or Idris. We're good, don't get me wrong. But we've only two heads between us, and we don't know everything. That's so pathetic. This board sounds sounds like a hard ass. Um, I could try and find him. I'd be grateful if you'd spare the time. We need his delivery soon as yesterday. Last he told me, he was taking a shortcut by Scylla, an asteroid in the Charybdis cluster. That's where I'd start, were I the adventuring type. You look out, though. The place is probably crawling with outlaws. Yep, and speaking of crawling, can I... I don't know, maybe... I can't hardly think with Dr. Fenhill yelling. I mean, she does want her friend. What's this? Uh, it's just some medical shirts. Wait, hold on. E no, it's just some random medical charts. I'm not gonna bother reading it. Oh my, I hope you feel better. You too. Oh, thank goodness, a ID cartilage. Sounds like... I could just walk on through. 
with no issue in the world. Felix, shut up. Ah, there you go. And she's right there. For the last ratchet on rotten time, leave me in peace. You ho-headed quacks, do you know that restful recuperation requires not being disturbed, don't you? Ellie sent me. What? Why? Everything's fine. We're all fine here. No need for her to be worrying her pretty little head about me. I'm just terrible, dreadful sick is all. Got a cough that won't quit and sores all over my body. Highly, lethally contagious. But I'll be fine, so long as I'm left alone. Huh, well, she is worried about you. A lot. Criminy. She really ain't gonna drop this, is she? Nope. Alright, okay. We can discuss this like the level-headed folk that we are. Seems I've got to do something before Ellie goes jabbering my business to anyone with one ear and an intent to listen. Finally. Okay, Jesse, what's up? The truth is, I'm not sick. But if you repeat what I'm about to tell you to anyone, I will deny it with my dying breath. You, uh, ain't with the board, are you? See, I owe them. A lot. I might have missed a payment or two, and the other night I swear someone was following me back to my room. So, I hold up here to lay low. Ellie asked me to help you, so that's what I plan to do. Udon Bedford's the board guy on the station. He'd know how I stand with them. If you can square things for me, I'd owe you one even bigger than Ellie owes me. What did you do that got you in trouble? What? No, I didn't do anything. I'm a law-abiding denizen of the ship, I swear. Yet you think the board had someone follow you, and now you're hiding out. Like, make it make sense. Think? No. Mm -hmm. I recognize a contracted killer when I see one, thank you. Mm -hmm. In my line of work, that's a skill you develop during week one, assuming you want to keep breathing. All right, I'll fess this part up too, if it means you'll help me. I'm a thief. <gasps> I specialize in particularly high-end and historically valuable items. Three weeks back... I caught rumor that the Blood Tear Diamond, last worn by an heiress on the Lost Hope, had surfaced for the first time in 70 years. So you stole it? If I had, you think I'd be hiding out in the Med Bay? I was gonna steal it, lined up Udom as my buyer. He paid half up front to finance the operation. Let's just say things went sideways about the time I got my hands on the diamond, and it crumbled to stardust in my palm. Anywho, I barely made it out with my life and nary a plan to make back Udom's deposit I'd spent. I'll talk to Udom for you. Thanks for helping me with the board. You're a real pal. Or I guess I should say, Ellie is one, huh? Right. Alright, so we gotta go talk to Udom and just tell him to back off with the depth, so this should be interesting. Come on. Woo! You see, that really does get me on edge a little bit. Let me just, uh... I love how you're a doctor, but you're smoking. Any word on Jessie? She's in depth to the board and thinks someone's after her. I'll handle it. Good luck. The board's got an office on the promenade just before engineering. You can't miss it. Thank you for watching this episode. This is Lover of Ladies, and I'll see you next week.